In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to you all as we come together for our Mass today. It's the Tuesday of the 13th week of the year, and we're at a time of uncertainty here in Victoria, at any rate, in terms of how we're moving forward and trying not to move backwards with the COVID-19 restrictions. If you're watching this from interstate, <laughs> you you might say, well, that's Victoria for you, but we're, do we're doing our best. So for those of you here at St Simons and those of you who are virtually here at St Simons via our website Mass, welcome indeed, as we ask the Lord's help and grace and blessing on everything that we do. Let's just pause for a moment and we'll ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, through the grace of adoption, you chose us to be children of light. Grant that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but may always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Listen, sons of Israel, to this oracle the Lord speaks against you, against the whole family I brought out of the land of Egypt. You alone of all the families of earth have I acknowledged. Therefore it is for all your sins that I mean to punish you. Do two men take the road together? If they have not planned to do so, does the lion roar in the jungle if no prey has been found? Does the young lion growl in his lair if he has captured nothing? Does the bed fall to the crown if no trap has been set? Does the snare spring up from the ground if nothing has been caught? Does the trumpet sound in the city without the populace becoming alarmed? Does misfortune come to a city if the Lord has not sent it? No more does the Lord do anything without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who can help feeling afraid? The Lord speaks, who can refuse to prophesy? I overthrew you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a branch snatched from the blaze, and yet you never came back to me. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, Israel, is what I plan to do to you. And because I am going to do this to you, Israel, prepare to meet your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response, lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You are no God who loves evil. No sinner is your guest. The postful shall not stand their crown before your face. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You hate all who do evil. You destroy all who lie. The deceitful and the bloodthirsty man the Lord detests. But I, through the greatness of your love, have access to your house. I bow down before your holy temple, filled with awe. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus got into the boat, followed by his disciples. Without warning, a storm broke over the lake, so violent that the waves were breaking right over the boat. But he was asleep. So they went to him and they woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are going down. And he said to them, Why are you so frightened, you men of little faith? And with that he stood up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and all was calm again. The men were astounded and said, Whatever kind of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I read this Gospel, I think of Lex Luthor. You all know who Lex Luthor is, don't you, of course? <laughs> you don't. Lex Luthor was the enemy, the arch enemy, the malicious, malevolent enemy of Superman. And he was played in the 1978 movie of Superman. I think it was 78, it might have been 77. That was 77, I think it was made by Gene Hackman. Now, there's a little clip which we might put onto this mass on the website with a bit of luck. And, and Gene Hackman has got the greatest smile you've ever seen. But when he smiles and he's a baddie, it's a really bad smile. <laughs> but as Lex Luthor, he wanted to take over the world. Of course you would. And his plan, well, he had a number of different plans. One was to drop the whole west coast of America into the sea so that all the cheap land he'd bought off east of that would be his and he would then have the west coast of California all to himself. But all of this was about the weather. He said, if you control the weather, you control the world. And that's probably right when you think of it, in the sense of weather is something which comes into our life every day. We can look it up on our phone, look it up on the front page of the newspaper, wait for the weather report at the end of the news, half past six or whenever it might happen to be, and we say, what's it going to be like? Hot, cold, windy, hail? frost, whatever. And so much depends on that. Agriculture and any number of different other areas, not just whether we put on a jacket or a coat or not. The whole notion of controlling the weather, of course, is something which has always eluded us. We're not even now all that good at predicting it. We're not bad, but we're better than we were. But in this little scene, where Jesus calms the storm, there's a number of things to take on board. Not just that if you control the weather, you control the world. But what is taken on board is the fact that we talk about often the storms of life. We all go through turbulent times. We use the same sort of phraseology about the way in which life is lived, as we do for weather. We talk about personalities as being warm and cold. And there's so many links between life itself as we live it and the weather as we experience it. One of the great things about the weather is that it changes. On the one hand, if it's Beautiful day, sun is shining, birds are singing, no wind, etc., etc. 
It's a, a beautiful day, but we also know that that can change. It can get cold, it can get windy, it can get, get ugly, stormy and whatever. At the same time, when it's a miserable, bleak day, or it's a stormy day, the wind is howling a gale and whatever, we know it's not going to go on forever. We know it will change. The weather in its own way is God's way of telling us two important lessons. When things are good, don't get carried away. When things are tough, don't let it crush you. Both of those are important lessons. And each day, we, if we've got a lovely day, we enjoy the weather and are grateful for it. And if it's an ugly, brutal sort of a day, we say, well, it will, it will change, it will go. And when we look at the storms of life, the storm of life there in the gospel, that it was Jesus who calmed the storms. And Jesus can calm the storms in our lives as well. We just got to turn to him. As the apostles did, perhaps a bit reluctantly, to begin with, they didn't want to wake him up. But I'm not quite sure how he was asleep in the boat, but anyway, I was able to sleep at the Grand Prix opposite Pitt Strait once and really did, went to sleep. But anyway, I mean, Grand Prix aren't really that exciting, cars just running around Albert Park or whatever, so I went to sleep. So people can sleep amidst all sorts of noise and turmoil. Let's take on board the fact that if we call out to Jesus, as the apostles did, Lord, save us, we're in trouble, we are going down, we need your help. It's a reminder to us in this little gospel story, not only to be confident that things can change, but that through our faith in Jesus, that things will change. We're going through a bit of a tough time. I say we because everyone's feeling the strain of what we're doing at the moment on any number of different levels. It can be economic, it can be emotional, it can be psychological, on so many different levels. These are tough times and we're now well into our fourth month. And it came out of the blue. It came without warning. It came without any real preparation. Sure, we read about a few things back in February on the other side of the world, but we didn't really dream it was going to impact our lives the way it has. And then we just, the storm seemed to be dropping and then it picks up again and so on. It's okay, we'll get through. And that's the message of our gospel today, to know that our faith in Jesus will get us through, not necessarily today or tomorrow, but in time, and the storm of life, whatever it might be, whether it's related to the shutdowns and the restrictions and the economic and employment situations, or whether it's something quite different and something that might have happened to us anyway through sickness or bereavement or whatever, to know that our faith and our trust in Jesus will get us through. The storms of life will always be there. But they will change. We don't get carried away with the good days, but we won't let the bad days crush us either because Jesus is there, maybe, maybe seemingly asleep, but he's there nonetheless, and things will change for the better. We stand for our prayers of intercession. First little prayer is spot on from that gospel. Help us to realise that our troubles are slight and short-lived. They are as nothing compared with the joy we shall have when we reach our home with you. Lord, hear us. Come to the lonely, the unloved, those without friends. Show them your love and help them to care for their brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Take away our pride temper our anger, 
May we follow you in your gentleness, and may you make us humble of heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, increase in us your gift of faith, so that the praise we offer you may ever yield its fruit from heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. From the memorial book, we pray today for the repose of the soul of Amy Cairns, whose anniversary of death occurs today. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Check this wine. And water. She ended up with your Christ who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God, we ask you to receive us, you please, at the sacrifice we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. <laughs> Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> O God, you graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries. Grant that the deeds through which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now, distanced as we are to a degree, let's offer each other a sign of peace in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer that we pray each day at Mass is a reminder not only to those who are part of the, the Mass on the website but also to us who are present here at St Simon's of the, the deep mystery and gift of the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you to live in my soul. 
Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may this divine sacrifice which we have offered and which we have received fill us with life. Bound to you in lasting charity, may we bear fruit that lasts forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>